Shaggity shaggity check. Shaggity check of the Chinese chicken. Your how's it go? I have a drumstick in your brain. And your brain starts, brain starts clicking. clicking or stop sticking. Stops ticking. Oh, really? watch the next files with no lights on. Dollar maze on. Oh, the smoke man's in this one. All right, I'm trying something new today. Ooh. We've got Discord integration. I didn't realize that Restream has this. So we'll see if it actually works. I uh, yeah, I thought we were gonna do Discord this time. Um, I'm glad we didn't because I wasn't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Jared's already uh, mocking my absurd nomenclature. <laughs> Not sure my brain has ever said no faster. Dialectical <laughs> polyology innovation generator. It's like oh, maybe I am just a villain, you know. Maybe I am like a a super villain. Ooh. Like introducing my dialectical polyology innovation generator. Hello, Uncle. Good evening. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> dialectical polyology innovation, innovation generator. generator. <laughs> Could be uh. So this restream is supposed to automatically. It's supposed to pop up in Discord. I don't see it popping up. I I have still yet to wrap my hand my hand, <laughs> wrap my head around Discord. Discord. Receive all your Discord messages in the ring. Oh, that's what it is. What? Oh, I see. I thought that it was going to show up in Discord, but it's not. It's not going to show up in Discord. It's going to show up in the restream chat. Uh, well, I see. Okay. So, like people that type in the Discord, it'll go to. The it'll restream. go to here, but I don't have anybody in Discord at this point. Okay, that makes sense. All right, very good. Pretty For good. some reason, my. Uh, My restream bot is not functioning properly. It's not showing me. Let's make every sure everything is uh, working okay. Unkush, is everything okay in the uh, YouTube? Mm hmm. Just, just making sure that we're we're live everywhere. We're tip top. Good as. Grain, as they say. It's just weird. It's like, uh, you know, okay. Yep. I um, could say we're good. All right. Well, today's uh, absurd title is Dialectical Polyology Innovation Generator. Hmm. I'm going to throw this in the. Uh, there. Let me get over to Facebook real quick. How's your week? Mm, interesting. Interesting. Okay. Not um, not painful, but not super exciting. Okay. Mediocre, as it were. Mediocre. Okay. All right. How about you? How about you? I didn't yeah, about it's you. Uh, yeah, it's a good week actually. Yeah. But we've uh. Been, they, the company I'm working for has been working on remodeling this house uh, mm. for months and uh, w there was that scare with the storm of course that mm. ended up going up uh, the coast uh, but that kind of just threw off everything we're like oh we're just about done with this house and there's this possible other hurricane coming mm -hmm. um, but we we wrapped up a lot of it this week and uh, yeah, I got some more experience doing, uh, like trim work that I've never really done before. So, and we started putting in floor in the living room in our, the trailer we're trying to move into. Um, so we we're about halfway there on the floor. Well, we're actually past halfway on the floor. We just got the rest of Rohan's room and just like five more feet. These last five feet are just driving me crazy. I was trying to put it in last night. So it's taken longer than you expected to for get everything. There, right? Yeah, for just for everything. Okay. Right. Yeah, I mean it's like uh, 
at, in the wake of the storm, it's just, I don't know, it just makes mm. you realize how much goes into these things. You see a fixer upper on TV and, you know, you're like, oh, it's in an episode. It's like law and order, you know, a, a case actually being solved in one, one episode. That's what fixer upper is for remodeling. It's like, yeah, it just takes forever. Mm. Hey, Henry, how's it going? Um, yeah, the painting. Oops, sorry. Caught myself on the uh, the painting. We're past painting now. We're putting in floor, and it's it's coming along. My uh, uh, my immediate boss, uh, our neighbor, he joined, and uh, he was just like, I guess m- Monday. When was it? Yeah, I think it was Monday evening because we had the the holiday. I went over there. We were talking about uh, work the next day. Mm. And he was like, when are you moving in? It's like, oh, I don't know, man. Just seems like we keep putting it off. He's like, we're coming over there tomorrow and put the floor in. I was like, well, come on, you know, we're working tomorrow. He's like, no, no. Yeah, that's that's fine. I was like, yeah, but, you know, we got too much stuff. Y'all got too much stuff on your plate. It's like, y'all going to be working late. Oh, he's like, oh, yeah, we'll be working late tomorrow at your house. You just buy some beers and we'll put the floor in. Wow. So, so we, we went and we got... <laughs> Uh, his favorite Kona, a six pack of that, and then an eighteen pack of Natty, and Natty light. set to putting the floor in together. So they just piled out, and I mean, we knocked out another half. Me and the homeowner knocked out a bit more before that. So I don't know. We're getting there. Just mm. taking forever. <laughs> Caleb J, a long time no see. Good to see you in the chat. Hey, brother, this is my favorite topic. (laughs) Uh, Henry's annoying me with this hashtag league, bro. League, bro. League, bro. League, bro. I I friended him on the on the Facebooks. Oh, Henry for a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think it was him. Yeah, y'all. Yeah. Because he's, he's excited now. He's friends with Seth Rogen. Uh, <laughs> hey, can you get that little cursor off my face? It's bothered me. Oh, really? I always do that. Like I realized in my surfing violinist intro, there, there's a cursor on your face. How's it even possible? I don't know. Is it off now? I don't know. I have to wait a couple. Of, yeah, it's off. Now. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do that. Okay. It's not on now, right? What about now? I I don't see real time, so. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so today's essay. It's not really an essay. This is just going to be more of a conversation. We'll just see where it goes. So if you've got, got any things to throw in the chat to this this uh, absurd discussion this morning. Thought for the week, September 7, 2019, the Serving Violence Podcast, version 0.21, the Dialectical Paleology Innovation Generator. (laughs) So the goal is to use divergent areas of study as poles to revolve between as a way to generate practical social... Oh, we got somebody, and I can't see it. Can you see that? Tell me who it is. It happened too fast. Harsh Josh... Well, oh. Harsh Joshi won. Is that on Twitch? Twenty dollar. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Harsh. Good to see you. Harsh is back. Harsh is back. Thank you for the donation. If you got anything you want us to uh, discuss, definitely more conversational podcast today as we discuss the dialectical polyology innovation generator. So to use divergent areas of study as poles to revolve between as a way to generate practical social energy or innovation. In the way the first dynamos or generators use the poles of magnets and revolutions between them as a way to generate electrical energy. The intent today is to get us all thinking of contrasting specialties in areas of study that are of particular interest to each of us that could open up new avenues. In magnetic terms, positive and negative, south and north are not value judgments. Mm. Right, and we're always talking about left and right in the political debate, and Democrat, Republican, and it's just like either or. Choose your side, pick your class. Uh, it's not even pick your class, though. It's right. It's just pick zero or one, good or bad. 
Um, but in terms of the energy that makes all these discussions that we have in the 21st century possible, you have to have both. You have to have you have to have a dialectic. You have to have an either or. You have to have polarity. So we're constantly asked to pick sides, political, philosophical, religious, and social debates. But all these debates in the 21st century are powered by a constant revolution. Not revolution like in a political revolution overthrowing the government or whatever. But a constant revolution between positive and negative. Between polarities thanks to the concept of the generator. I've chosen a 10-part list of contrasting fields of study that interest me. Some of them I have made up. I encourage you to coin some new areas of study today or mention some of your own either or poles of study that could be beneficial to revolve between. The English suffix ology, O-L-O-G-Y, is our appropriation of the ancient Greek term logia, which was derived from logos, the word. Take any word and throw ology after it and you got the study of whatever that word is. Again, as a surfing violinist, I'm not interested in one or the other. I'm interested in the crux and that the boat and the what I can write. I'm interested in the crux and the both and that crux creates and the new life that can happen on the other side of that intersection when the dilemma is truly faced after repeated revolutions. So a lot of the stuff that I've thought about in these last, I don't know, 15, 20 years, I got like this rough picture of the thing you know we talked about how legend of zelda was like a storyboard in a way for breath of the wild which came 20 years later when you when you have a uh, inferior technology you're kind of your hands are tied um and sometimes you, you can still convey some of the idea through the inferior technology right so i've i've come i keep coming back to this same that's same idea of this either or you know the surfing violinist am i a surfer am i a violinist or am i a working man or whatever like uh, the society wants to put you into one box and i'm saying let's uh look at look across the street across the railroad tracks across the pond across the ocean across the, to another field of interest and see what we can learn from that and when we went to india our show was american indian again it was a dialectic it was a polarity American and Indian. And even that term brings up all kinds of thoughts because people think about Native American. But we were Americans living in India. My son was quite literally, if you think about a hyphenated, um, an American Indian because he was born there. Yeah. So uh, just to get us thinking past one insular, like the word we like to say a lot, solipsistic, you know, so stuck on itself that it can't see anything outside of it. Parochial, ghetto. You know, anything, anytime we put ourselves in a little cantonment and ourselves in a little border and think that the rest of the world doesn't exist. Hmm. And so these specialties keep having us do that. And so I'm just constantly, that's my dead horse. I just keep beating here. So not interested in the one or the other, but interested in how both and. So I've got a list of 20 words here. And so the idea on the right, like you could say whatever is positive to you. I'll say the left side is negative and the right side is positive. Okay. And, and what I mean by that is we tend to go, depending on our field of study, our interest or whatever, we tend to go to the right side in mm -hmm. a lot of this. Psychology, sociology. If you're, if you're a Christian or religious person, you talk about a lot about eschatology, which is like a study of the age of the, whatever religious age you're in. End Tell, times. Yeah, end times. Teleology, that's the study of ending, of endings, uh, you know, ultimate things. In terms of philosophy, ideology, the study of, you know, these ideas and that, you know, we tend to have a negative idea of ideology at this point in certain certain social circles. Theology, the study of God. Semasiology, which is the study of senses and stuff. I don't really know much, much about that one. Um, epistemology, that's the study of how we come to know things. Soteriology and Christianity is a study of salvation, how a person gets saved. But soteriology, most religions are, are interested in that, that idea. Like how do you escape reincarnation? How do you go to heaven? How do you avoid hell? How do you avoid torment? How do you get out, you know, how do you get red pilled? Like, and I don't mean that in the political sense. I mean, like, how do you get out of the matrix? Um, so salvation, the study of salvation is an idea that permeates a lot of philosophy and, uh, and religion and, and, and to some degree even politics. Yeah. Uh, Marx was in, in a way 
interested in salvation, like the salvation of the working class. Pathology, that's the study of things that go wrong. So what I've done is I've taken some things that we don't necessarily think of and, and put it on the other side of that. So opposite psychology. It's, I, I've, I used to go to a counselor and pay a lot of money, um, you know, $125 for 45 minutes. And he gave me a lot to think about. It's good, but it's just not economically sustainable. It's not economically sustainable for 99% of the world's population. There's got to be a better way uh, to psychoanalyze or be, get counseled for, for the people that don't have access to that. Yeah. So I found out that physiology, um, practically applied, has been very helpful to me. Working with my hands, sweating, bleeding, ironically. I mean, not bleeding on purpose, not like I'm some kind of, I mean, I'm crazy, but not some like some sort of bloodletting, you know, superstition, like, we'll just have to get the bad blood out of you, sir. <laughs> but but uh, bleeding on the job has actually, I don't know, there's something about physical pain that helps. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, there is that thing, that phenomena of cutters, right? And people that hurt themselves because yeah. there's so much turmoil inside that they're just looking for, for some way to something to control. feel real. Yeah. Something to have control yeah. over the pain that's hitting them. Mm -hmm. Um, but opposite psychology, if you can, if you can merge that with physiology. And so there are actually, that's a whole field of study now, psychophysiology and JBP yep. talks about it quite a bit. So opposite. Uh, so in that sense, physiology is like a negative, like keeping you from just staying in that search for the persona or that search for the thing that, that happened to you when you were a kid. And it's, Put you in this dark place like mm. it it kind of grounds you in reality gets you back here um so like we talked about that jung tactic that he had where he would read you know about what like that reminder it's his little mantra he would read that thing to remind him who he was uh when he started feeling schizo and it would kind of ground him but physiology as a practice just hard work sweat running cardio uh working out whatever, something to, to ground you in actual physical reality. I think psychophysiology is a good uh, dynamo. You know, it's two things to kind of offset each other. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can listen to podcasts while you're working out or working, and that's, that's um, stretching your brain. Mm -hmm. On the other side of sociology, uh, which, you know, the study of so society and how we get here. Well, social interaction. Uh, social interaction, uh, you know, it depends on how you, uh, you know, what way you apply it, but civilization, a justification for civilization. Um, opposite of that, I'm putting praxeology, and that is, again, the Austrian economics uh, via Ludwig von Mises, his approach saying that we need a rigorous science uh, looking at human interactions uh, in, in economics. And he, he has this whole system of thought. It's a, it really is much more rigorously scientific, in my opinion, than a lot of what passage as the soft social sciences. And I think uh, it's it's just true. We all live in a very, uh, cat, you know, currency-based economy. And there's no going back to the village or, you know, the pristine pre-civilizational thing without figuring out how we got here and understanding why it exists the way it does and so praxeology i think is a good check on sociology that's untethered that's because it's it can be easy to just get narrowed in on a political theory or an economic theory that's not tied to the way the work, world actually works yeah <clears throat> uh, so i think i i'm big fan of of mises's meditations on human action so then you got uh, eschatology which christians are always talking about especially evangelical christians um and I think chronology, so I'm putting that there. And chronology is not necessarily a study. You know, it's just there's a chronology of, uh, you know, we use that word as, a, as what happens after something else. But I think uh, if you really think about the cause and effect in history, and it, it can kind of, uh, I mentioned anthropology here in a minute, it can kind of help you get context for how we got to a certain place. Because way too often we're thinking about the ends of things or these idealistic, you know, future, uh, the way the world should go or the doomsday scenario. So it's either like hell is coming or heaven is coming. And either way, uh, there tends to be 
like history repeating itself because people forgot how previous hells happened Mm -hmm. you know so we like that's kind of the idea we have with reverse redaction uncovering things in history that people necessarily don't want to talk about or pretend didn't happen and so chronology helps us be take a realistic perspective of how we got here and not just to you know nah, 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 see no evil hear, hear no evil speak no evil or on the other hand see no good hear no good uh sp- speak no good like mm-hmm. just oh no there's nothing good about the situation we're in that's just stupid and I, i'm guilty of that too as an idealist teleology uh is this philosophical idea you know the study of the ultimate uh, whatever good and i think biology is a good uh counterpoint to that mm-hmm. so and that's why you know the iNaturals app has been a kind of grounding thing for me because I'm living in my head all the time thinking about all these crazy words and you know and ideas of you know ideals and then you see this crazy insect or uh man I saw one this week it looked so weird it's a moth um and I found it I was looking for this one species of fly that I'd taken a picture of hmm. And this moth just doesn't look real. It's a it's a caterpillar. Did I show this last week? It's a larva of Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, you did. Oh, okay. So that's a good example of biology kind of grounding us in reality, realizing, oh yeah, sci fi is rooted in reality. And there's plenty of creepy things in the natural world that uh that are probably worth studying and learning from. And can that kind of help us maybe in our artificial selection that like we talked about, uh, avoid some pitfalls there. It's like if something's too good to be true, a lot of times it is. And someone in the future is going to pay for it. You know, when you when you play Icarus or you play uh, Tower of Babel, there's there are some uh, nasty demons on the other side that you might not have seen coming. Um, and then ideology. So. I've made up a word to counter that one. I'm calling mm. it koposology. So, all these are most of these have Greek roots. So, kopos uh, or kopia or something like that. Kopos is the ancient Greek word for work, and it means hard work involving sweat. It does not mm. mean academic work. And I think that's one of the problems where you have the white collar, blue collar, or the ivory tower, or you know the uh, the rabble. Uh, yeah, when those things are or those fields or specialties are isolated, it creates ghettos not just on one side or the other, but in both. And the ideological person doesn't realize what it means to blood, you know, to bleed, sweat, and weep uh, mm. in in what feels like a, a Sisyphus task, you know. And copus, so coposology, I think, is to to get us. People who may be more nerdy, autistic in a certain like intellectual area or artistic mm-hmm. area mm. and get us into more mm. uh, blood and sweat and practical work environments where you start to realize a lot of the problems we face in the world is because these two poles are not meeting and learning from one another. Yeah, that, it's funny because I was going to mention that in uh, Praxology, so interesting. <laughs> It yeah, and I, you know, the nice thing I liked about Mises and a lot of those people back then, like hard work just wasn't even a, even though the Industrial Revolution had already been on, you know, happening, mm-hmm. and you know, many of them were intellectuals. Like Mises was on the front lines of World War One, you know. So there, a lot of those people, even if they were like noble classes and stuff, they still went to war. You know, they still fought next to to uh, poor people. You know, and there was a the, the band of brothers camaraderie thing. I mean, that really did happen. Um, but more and more, we find ourselves more isolated by social, cultural, political, religious classes that just keep us uh, insulated from the pain. And I think mm-hmm. pain is actually a good thing as a human being. And so, yeah. when we try to isolate ourselves from that, then uh, there's just nasty effects that can happen from it. Pain for thee, but not for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, then opposite theology, and so theology is a study of God. Um, religious people, uh, you know, especially in uh, monotheistic religions, really spend a lot of time on this. But I think, in a way, we're all guilty of theology too much. 
whether we whether we are religious or not. We basically replace a God of transcendence with a God of human proportions. I mean, and, and people just do this. We, we have our idols and we're like, I could never be as good of a blank as blank. And we think of that person as the ceiling and then there's nothing beyond them. So they become your transcendent ideal. And that ends up being subpar for you because you, you just kind of like, you let go and let God. You just, well, just mm-hmm. delegate all that responsibility for curing the world's ills to them. Yeah. And so I think opposite of that, I I found anthropology to be very helpful. That was my field of study in college. Um, and even though I went to a Christian college, I, I was actually, I thought they did a pretty good job of dignifying individual cultures, not just mm-hmm. saying, oh, look at how backwards this person, like they actually took the culture in its context and uh, had had respect for it. Mm-hmm. And so when my first trip to India, I was definitely more on the that religious, ideological, theological side of things. And then I noticed some big gaping holes in my practice uh, that that I probably wouldn't have noticed had I not gone overseas. Mm. And so anthropology has been something near and dear to my heart. That's what the whole creative cross-cultural constructive part of the serving violinist has been. So I think that that's a good way to counter, even if you don't believe in a God, so you're not studying theology. I think all of us in one level or another do have an ideal, a person that we look up to as our hero. And so you could replace that, like you could think of them as your theological ideal. But it is good to study human beings, anthropos, study of humans and uh, different cultures, because not everyone is going to see it the same way. That doesn't mean all ideas are equally valid, but it does mean that in a lot of cases, there isn't a right choice. In a lot of cases, there isn't. It isn't right to eat whether you should eat bananas or plantains. I'm going to talk a little bit this week. We got to go to a Puerto Rican uh, slash Cuban restaurant here. They do both types of food everything's in spanish and uh oh man having fried plantains for the first time in like forever dude oh i don't think i've ever had it so good oh i love it when i was in miami man it was my jam and so when i took one bite we had been working on that floor uh with the homeowner and so oh my gosh it was so good dude (laughs) so i mean that's that's why i love anthropology it's just that it's not just a, a dry academic study when it's done well it's like Anthony Bourdain's best No Reservations episodes. Like that's a good anthropology from my from my perspective is just getting down into the nitty gritty of whatever the food and culture uh, is and celebrating it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, the next two, semasiology. I have to look this one up. I can't even remember what it means. <laughs> this is actually a real field of study, believe it or not. The branch of linguistics that deals with words and phrases and the concepts that they represent. Whereas... Kines, what is that one? Kines, kinesiology. This is the study of mechanics of body movements. So this is the big thing I'm trying to get at with this whole dubstep ballet mm. thing I've been like trying to get towards for the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years. The idea being that we have allowed our technology to take so much of our uh body out of uh, out of getting around out of uh human interaction there's just we don't have to walk places hardly um if we do we're probably distracted there's just a lack of movement and and there's a hunger for it there has been a hunger for movement in post uh, industrial revolution ever since and that's where music usually comes in um uh, in folk music or underground music, like the desire for dance is just like palpable. So many of us nerds, especially just don't know how to do it. And we feel very, you know, akimbo. We feel very awkward. So while we need to keep studying language, linguistics, uh, we need to get a better uh, command of our movement. And, and not just in working out or uh, or work, but figuring out how to uh, make music dynamically and dance and not being like freaked out about that stuff. So 
Kinesiology. I thought that I thought I was going to have to make up like some opposite of semasiology, but nope, there it is. It's it's a real thing. And and like in India, I've mentioned this before, but in India there is like a whole there's a whole system of movements in their dances and their classical dance and facial expressions where meaning is communicated through uh, gesture and through expression, and it's it's a uh, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful as an art form, but also I think it has a meaning that you can't really approximate <clears throat> through, uh, ex- through, v- through words. So in the West, we typically use music to do that for us, you know, to, to handle that part of the feeling, but, but we need to get the body back involved in it so that it's not, not just, uh, everything literal, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, a couple more here. Epistemology, that's a study of how we come to know things. And so this is actually a word. O- oikodomio. I think maybe I made this one up. Did I make this one up? <laughs> this yes. is actually a word. That no, but okodomio <laughs> is a word. It means uh, building. So back in oh. ancient Greek, it means like the... Uh, Oedipus? Like a builder. It's like a build a house builder, basically. So <laughs> I'm I'm thinking about this a lot because I'm rebuilding houses mm-hmm. and I don't think and you could you could say instead of epistemo instead of oikodomiology, you could say building science. That would be fine. That's pretty much the term that's being used. Um you can find some YouTube channels about building science and basically mm-hmm. it's trying to go it's trying to go one up past architecture and to say to talk about the the materials materials we build are buildings with uh the way that we structure our buildings because we are in a rut like nowhere in history i mean our i know i harp on this but i'm telling the more that i get into our walls and floors in the western world at least uh this is garbage we're building our houses out of garbage it's stupid i mean and i mean quite literally like garbage (laughs) i don't know what it's just it's terrible it's not designed to withstand anything uh they're just they're designed to break and um i I don't really again i don't really think that this is some like you know super villain out there like haha i'm going to make them or small group of people like i'm going to make them build their houses out of sand so they have to come back and build it again (laughs) job security (laughs) i don't think it's actually someone consciously doing that i think it's the market rewarding bad players it's well, a whole, it, it's consumerism. It, it is, right. It's so much easier to use that garbage. Yeah, it's like a, uh, it's the Gresham's Law thing, that bad value drives out good value, bad currency drives out good currency. But really, that's only true in, um, in how did I put it? Uh, Gresham's Law can only exist in ghettos of artificially, of artificiality, superstition immediacy um, um, uh, you know a lust for immediacy mm. and subsidy or cronyism so like when we get stuck in this this insular thing again where we're not we're not actually hearing oh wait a minute this guy over here has a technology that would render this whole problem moot <laughs> like we wouldn't have to even be doing this if we would just use that guy's technology over there but people are like no 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 don't look over there don't pay no attention to the man behind the curtain um so i think that when you actually go out and try to build a building especially a house which has definitely emotional <clears throat> connotations to it it def it helps you get your head out of your philosophical ass you know, it's just you're stuck in these stupid esoteric questions. I mean, me, uh, I'm one to talk, right, with all my esoteric <laughs> stuff. But you got all these stupid esoteric ideals, and then you come back and actually try to build something and realize, wow, this is hard. Someone yeah. actually has to sit here and do this terrible job. Yeah. Maybe there's a better way to do this because you don't have a problem with it when someone else is doing it. But then when you start to do it, you realize, oh, no, this is terrible. I'm forcing well, somebody. My, my existence means that somebody has to do this. Yeah, and and I think that could that could also apply to to using paper to to make our walls. You know, like 
have you ever tried yeah, i'm sure you've tried to take down walls that are like fixed walls that are not made out of um drywall it's it's a hundred times harder Th this is true um but again it's uh it's like uh hmm and I, I think that does say something about our culture that we we are trying to be more it's just so much of what we do is is an afterthought you know it's it's like we it's like we've re regressed to teepees in a sense you know into tents like it's like, oh, well, we want to be mobile, want to be agile. It's like, okay, we'll find out a better technology in this because tents yeah. were easier to put up and take down than drywall. Disposable. We're trying to be disposable. We're trying to be yeah. disposable, and we're trying to just not be pinned down. You know, it's like this free-spirited mm. capitalism, but it's not free-spirited. And that's the thing. It's too easy to game free-spiritedness in a commodified system. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's just uh, there. there's something that needs to be done to offset. Like, in a way, epistemology does... Like make you go up into the clouds. And you're so heavenly minded, you know, no earthly good. Um, and I think building science is one way to kind of uh, bring us back to reality and realize, you know, okay. So talk about like uh, the Bahamas right now. They are mm -hmm. they are rocked, and uh, mm -hmm. the imp the impulse for everyone is just to, to like let's just go do something. Let's just go help people. We need to get to a more preventative strategy. We've had the technology on hand for 200 years to build houses that that hurricane could not hurt, even in the Bahamas. We have something called cement. Just build igloos in the south. Done. I, I'm serious. Think about it. You could build an igloo on a beach, and if you went down 25 feet, I don't care how big the, the storm surge is. I mean, this, this is an asked and answered question by technology to, like 200 years ago. So the question is, <clears throat> why why don't we? Is it like an aesthetic thing? Is it this no no? Thing? It's just it's just because we're we're just we just go through business as usual. You know, it's just mm -hmm. the status quo. This is the way things are. Well, have you ever stopped to ask why? Why? I mean, we got to where we are. The good things that we celebrate, we got to where we are because we were thinking about the future. Well, mm -hmm. you know, not thinking about, well, this is the way we did it for 5,000 years. I didn't even see no problem with it yet. There's, yeah, there's plenty of problems. I mean, that's sort of, I mean, that's an extreme. I mean, imagine someone told you today, well, I mean, it's a little different. But, but it, you know, you tell somebody, hey, get rid of your house and make it out of, make it out of cement. No, know? no, but see, okay, so there's a great book called The Ugly American. And in this book, it's talking about, uh, cross-cultural communication a lot. I was required to read it when I was uh, going to college. Mm -hmm. And it was basically a fictional retelling of some of the types of situations that led to the Vietnam War. And one of the... So the ugly American is taught... It's, it's kind of a double entendre talking about bad American uh, diplomacy in these areas where uh, a guy, you know, like an ivory tower pseudo-intellectual political guy living in his little American cantonment is glad-handing people in this other country and in like being a useful idiot for for other political movements uh, just for them to basically tyrannize people and it's all out of sight out of mind he doesn't care because he's getting a paycheck no matter what you know how good a job he does as an ambassador so that's the ugly American in terms of international relations. And it's just a typical solipsistic attitude that not just Americans are guilty of. Like lots of places are guilty of. They just, they see things through their lens and all they're concerned about is their career, their family, their tribe, their language block, whatever. And they're, they're not thinking about the broader implications of their actions. There is another character in the book who is literally an ugly American. He's an ugly looking dude. And his wife is noticing that in this particular village, in wherever they are, all the women have bent backs. And she's like, why do they have bent backs? And so she just looks at them. She realizes, oh, they're all using brooms that have no handle. And so they're sitting there sweeping their porches off every morning, bent over. And you'll still see this in India. A lot of these brooms are just, um, it's just a collection of straw with a little rubber band around it. And uh, servant class, I mean, they do have these bent backs even today in India. 
And so in the book, she tries to say, hey, look, guys, we've got these brooms where you have handle. It's like, I mean, this is like, this is not a new innovation, right? I mean, this is really old. And it's not like these people are idiots, but they just haven't, they just never thought like, oh. And so she comes in, she's like, hey, look. And she tries to give it to them and like, cool. And they just like take the handle off and they start using the, the thing, like in the way that they broom. And so one day she's like, uh, she takes one of theirs, adds a handle to it. And then every day she just goes out on her porch and sweeps the porch, like kind of ostentatiously. And eventually after a couple of weeks, people are like, wait a minute. Oh, and then they get it. And the women just all start doing it. It's like they, they don't even need to buy a new type of broom. All they have to do is get a stick, tie it to the thing, and then they don't have to bend over. And so she, just through a, like a, they call that like, I can't remember the term for it. It's like culturally appropriate technology or something like that. But it's like pe when people see it, then they realize, oh, this is better. So, I mean, if you build, so like in Mexico Beach, a dude spent extra money in this current system. It took extra money to do it, but it wouldn't take extra money if people just change their tastes. The market would satisfy the need. Once competition, you know, drives down prices. So a guy spent extra money in Mexico Beach, and his house was indestructible, man. Like, it, it, he built it to, a, to exceed all codes that had ever been written for our area. And, I mean, everyone did a story on this guy. Hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. all it takes is one person to be like, hey, we don't have to drink sewage water. And people are like, oh, spring water is better than sewage water. No, I'm not getting sick. Like, it's just it's just like you don't have to have a sermon about it. Like, just the action is the sermon. So that that's what I mean, mm -hmm. I guess. But, I mean, your house isn't made out of cement. Well, yeah, I mean, I just started building things after the storm so i know I mean, but will you are you going to build your house out of cement everywhere in central florida does after hurricane andrew it was it was state it was uh like lower florida code like huh. yeah it's all it's all cement block uh huh. but for some reason and good old boy panhandle i don't know we don't have to the code hasn't caught up and i'm seeing the way that things are being rebuilt since it's like interesting I think there's a lot of blind eyes going on here because, again, this because uh, immediate necessity is the mother of of not invention. It's the mother of uh, the status quo solipsism. Right? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like oh, we got to get it done. We got to get it done. Why? Get it done? Why? Why do we have to get it done? Uh, I don't, uh, Netflix, man. I, I, I got I to work for the weekend, man. <laughs> I got to get my leave. <laughs> I got to get out of here, man. I got to go. <laughs> Yeah. All right, a couple more. Soteriology, that's a study of salvation. I think mm -hmm. technology is something that is good. Not that is technology is going to save us. I'm not saying that. But I think it's a good check because people can get to be real superstitious with their religious ideals. And again, I don't want to just pick on Christians and Hindus and Buddhists and Muslims here and Jews. I don't want to just pick on religious people. Because I think we're all religious in our own way. And so everyone has their own salvation thing. And, you know, it's like, oh, if we just fix climate change, that'll be it. If we just fix the baby boom, that'll be it. If we just fix overpopulation, that'll be it. If we just fix uh, pollution, that'll be it. Like, there's always some salvation around the corner. Once you fix that one, they're going to have a new one. There's always going to be a chicken little scenario. So, oh, well, a lot of those things, a lot of the chicken little scenarios for the real world Technology has already saved us from some of those, hmm. you know. So that's something yeah. to kind and of. Te and technology balance. doesn't have to just mean like the internet and cell phone. It, I mean, technology is a hammer. Technology is a, yes. a, a updated saw, you know, yes. like electric saw. It's, yeah, it doesn't have to be electronic. And that's the thing I think we got to, like, just like with the broom story, you know, a mm -hmm. hand, putting a stick on a, on a, an existing broom. Boom, technology. That's a technological innovation. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be like highfalutin. And it doesn't have to be capital uh, in right. a sense. So, tier, uh, so there we go. Soteriology. Uh, final one here. Pathology and, I don't know, orthology or orthology? Orthology. Orthology. I don't know. <laughs> whatever. So the idea here being we study the, path, uh, the things that go wrong. So that's why we like to watch Hannibal and... Uh, was that other one though? Oh, the blood one. Uh, uh, Dexter. Dexter, yeah. Uh, Mind Hunter. You know, we like watching this stuff. 
because it's a kind of dive into the the dark side, right? Um, mm-hmm. But you don't want to only stay there. You want to find some good examples. And so I found myself, like a lot of the hero worship I've done over the years, I invariably get to the part where I find out the person's human and I lose interest in them. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, this guy's just another human being. I, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to be so, you know, so stuck up that you can't learn from other people who have a problem. Um, but I think if we can offset those studies of the negative with good examples and it, uh, w- without lifting those people up to the the point of being a god or a guru you know what i mean like if yeah. you can just study good examples of whatever technology economics uh charity work whatever it is have a good example to kind of balance that descent into hell hmm so let's hit chat um, and then we can kind of revisit some of this. There's, there's quite a little bit here. Kyle, I'm sure he's not here. <laughs> uh, Kyle said, uh, LMAO, did y'all let Ford pick the topics because he loves his own voice? <laughs> I used to, <laughs> Kyle's one of the first guys I worked with in the previous job taking the uh, drywall out. So, yeah, he's 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 heard plenty of Ford rants. Yeah. <laughs> We actually would do this show, uh, and then I realized I'd get in trouble if I kept doing it because I was driving. I would hold. I was holding the phone while we were driving home from work, like in the company nice. vehicle. Uh-huh. Like, Ford and Kyle after five, and it was just a little <laughs> like we talked about the day. And where and can like, we see it? I've got all the videos, so now that I'm not in that company more, I actually can upload them. I think they're. I thought they're pretty funny. Well, me and Kyle thought they're funny, so maybe we'll just get, upload them. Will for they me get and Kyle. Kyle in trouble? No, he's he's not there anymore either. So mm. neither of us last for a long good job. So uh, yeah, that, that might be kind of fun. You hear less Ford rant and more just goof goofery. I like um, goofery. Yeah, there's some good. Oh, okay, hey Caleb James with a little dialectic. Anthropology versus aperture science. <laughs> Isn't that from Portal, that game? Yeah. Aperture Science is a scientific research company founded by Cave Johnson. Portal and mm-hmm. Portal 2 take place on aperture science in Richmond. Oh, but that's from Half Life, right? So Half Life is the Portal universe, or Portal is in the Half Life universe. So mm-hmm. Anthropology versus a- Aperture Science. Interesting. Mm. I don't know the. I've never played any of those games. Did you ever play uh, Half Life? Mm-mm. Yeah, me neither. Bonit, hello. If you're still with us today, Kostub. Good to see you, Mr. Ford. Case hang up. Uh, Metiko. Yeah, I'm okay. Us, uh, Bardia. Yeah, good. Jensen is a kinest- kinesthesiologist. Kinesthesiologist, is that kinesthesiologist? Yeah, he practices the study of kinesthesiologist movement. Cool. I mean, I know he does a lot of sports medicine stuff. That's cool. Mm. Kinesthesi- kinesthes- kinesthesiology is the scientific study of human or non-human movement. Kinesi- kin- oh no, okay. It, it is. Kin- there is. Is there a difference? Kinesthe- kinesthesiology versus kinesiology <laughs> so there's two there's two <laughs> kinesthetics is the study of body motion and of the perception of one's own body motions i'm just going through the list in my head of all the people i can't tell this <laughs> share this podcast <laughs> <laughs> just just because just it's... just thinking about like if they tuned in at this point it'd be like uh, uh, i'm out uh, I'm... <laughs> I think it's interesting though. You know, my dad was a uh, is a linguist. Oh, really? He got his master's in ling- hmm. linguistics. Sociolinguistics was one of the more interesting classes I took at college. Mm-hmm. Like, it really made me think a lot about uh, how we construct our own meaning in societies and how they don't necessarily translate. You know, mm-hmm. how language can oof, language is it's an interesting little it's an interesting wormhole. But that's why you definitely need something to balance it out, out or you will go kind of crazy. Mm. Cool. I have to pick. Uh, it's our, our class reunions coming up 20 years. So mm. we're going to be, uh, hopefully I'll get to see Jensen pick his brain about kin- kinesiology or kinesthesiology, whichever one it is. 
Hmm. Hi, Dostreskog. Forward my notifications lag and catch me up. Highlight the <laughs> details. Um, yeah, you know, we've just been going through that document and alienating as many people as possible. <laughs> um, my home is a sailboat, so I can't relate to having roots. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Wait a minute. I thought you were in, like, New Mexico or something. New Mexico? Didn't he say he was out west and he, he would travel out to the Philippines to go surf Cloud 9 every now and then? He could still live on a boat. New I'm Mexico has lakes. I don't know, but he doesn't have yeah. roots. Interesting. Yeah. I want to know more. Can you do like a? Can you do a vlog sometimes, Heidel? He had to go. I chased him off. Oh, again. sorry, sorry, Heidel. He doesn't like me. Morning, dynamic night, James. Good to see you, sir. Teepees have merit, bro. Yeah, that's true. That's true. In the certain certain things, skills are better than knowledge worldwide. I I. I think we probably need both, but I do think that there's a a tragic lack of skills, uh, especially in the school system. Yes. Uh, Heidel says one third of the cost to build standard versus custom. You would do the same man with black hair and double chin. Now hush, let Ford talk. <laughs> I don't have a double. Well, maybe I do. Do I have a double chin? I don't know. Uh, James said the surfing violin is for president. Yeah, I mean, I think with more ti with more titles like this, it's just it's bound to happen. Ford, I must excuse myself. Christmas light boy has angered me. <laughs> did you did you uh, talk him off? Did you say something to him? No, I guess it's just no. I didn't say anything. I think it was just me responding to you. He didn't like my uh, <laughs> he didn't like my questioning of the. Uh, it, it was right around the time we were talking about the cement houses. Oh, didn't like the questioning of the the hey geography. Mm. Uh, yeah, it isn't like my Christmas lights either. My Christmas shirts either. It's like not seeing the forest for the trees. Says Moo on Facebook. Yes, yeah. I think a lot of our, uh, I think a lot of our intellectual ideas and ideologies and debates, political and social, end up being. Uh, so focused on a little tiny thing, we can't see the we can't see the bigger picture. Concrete is used in Tokyo a lot. It's used in India a lot too. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Fifth Eight Productions asks a question. I have a question. I'm watching you since you were in India, and it's fair to say that your numbers are pretty low. What gives you motivation to keep making YouTube videos? Um, at this point, I I'm like not in a phase where I'm trying to make this like get big or anything. So it's kind of freeing. I'm just. I'm just here talking with friends um, mm. and people who want to be thinking about these similar things. This has been more of a, uh, I don't know, what is this? Like a, uh, yeah, like a, a small group therapy session. I think mm. the last couple of years of me and Judas podcasting, um, start with reverse redaction. The podcast Judas started where we would, uh, we would discuss more cultural topics. And I would I think around that time I started my podcast, but... It you just, started before Reverse Redaction. That's true. Yeah, I did that's start, true. and but I just wasn't in the place where I could do it. I just didn't have a... Uh, just, I don't know. Every, a lot was up in the air, and I think my brain was still in India. Uh, so it, it just, I just wasn't really prepared for it. But if you go back and listen to that intro podcast, just like the first 10 minutes, it's a... Oh, it's like a... It's a Ford rant that I still stand behind, honestly. I, it's good. I go back and listen to it. I'm like, all right, yeah, no, that's that's me. Um, so I'm trying to get a lot of those out of my system so I can kind of get back to... I do want to get back to making videos. And I just want to get back to a place where it will be sustainable um, so that I'm not going to quit when I'm only seeing these tiny numbers. So, mm. you know, when I see a hundred now, it doesn't bother me. Uh, when I see, you know, less than 10 people in chat, it doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, thanks Harsh. Appreciate it. Aim, aim, aim into the self therapy. I'm hoping that it is benefiting, uh, people like Harsh, people like improbable one, um, uh, people like, uh, my buddies over here, Jude and Jared. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a small group of people, but I but I hope it's I hope it's useful for and, other weird people like me. So and let's be honest, you take a little solace in something flipped at some point, and you went to war against <laughs> people that don't like you <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> I've never heard somebody like relish the fact that somebody unsubscribed as much as you have. <laughs> <laughs> Unsubscribe you. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, I love it when they unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we 
we'll get out of this. Uh, Akash says, hey, man, how's it going there? Actually, yeah, we're doing good. We're just talking about um, what we're trying to do on YouTube. So what I'm doing now, the only videos I'm doing is actually taking me and Judah's uh, moments from the podcast and kind of compressing them into little clips, just like Joe Rogan has clips on the Joe Rogan mm -hmm. experience. I'm just making some of those. Some stuff where it's a little more, uh, I don't know, compressed where, you know, where maybe we have a little nugget, we have a conversation that doesn't go on for like 10 minutes, you know, something, mm -hmm. something shorter. Um, I know H3 does a similar thing. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just cutting those. I think that'll be, because my wife hasn't even listened to this podcast yet. I'm, so I'm trying to give her something to, to like, oh man, I, f I was supposed to get her a pumpkin spice latte this morning. I totally forgot. Dang it. Somebody send forward a pumpkin spice latte right Crap. now. Jeez. Uh, sneak away. Go get one. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think I probably will. Dang. One thing I wanted to say about the about the essay. Okay. Um it's the idea. I want to help I want your help fleshing out this idea of like the need for binary. Mm -hmm. So it's like in all of this, what I see is like we need binary. It's just we don't need to oscillate between the two sides. You know what I mean? Like we need, we need the, we need to know what, what the extremes are to live in the middle. Hmm. And I'm not saying that for sure. I'm just putting that out there to kind of think about like, cause, cause without the words on either side of that column, like we're not trying to be either one. We're trying to be both and, you know, somewhere in the middle. But humans are linear beings. And so I think this whole time, so one, uh, I've started writing a fantasy story. I don't know. If, I feel like it was before we went to India. It was called The Third Path. And the idea was trying to find, uh, you know, in, in this fantasy world, the whole idea being there's a Leviathan, right? It's this enormous, like mm -hmm. absurd monster that, that there's a giant empire mm -hmm. and uh, there's this absurd monsters like bigger than Godzilla. It's like this, it's the size of a city. It's not the size of a building. Mm -hmm. And this monster basically c comes through and will attack a village and, you know, five people will die in the attack. Uh, mm -hmm. Eventually, one of these knights realizes this monster is actually controlled by the empire. Mm. So it's not just a symbol of the empire. It's literally the way the empire keeps control. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically, you know, five people a, a, a day are being sacrificed. It's like this old school sort of like, we just have to sacrifice to Leviathan. It's just do, you know, let it do its thing. Mm -hmm. And him and this uh, tribe, like she's more of a, like I was modeling him after like a British knight and she was going to be like a, uh, I don't know, maybe like South Asian, like, but this isn't another universe, right? It's not like um, our world, but she's like some sort of uh, martial artist from South Asia. So like it, it's a totally unique thing. So it's basically, she's like an assassin and he's a knight. And so they team up because both of their, their family are in trouble and they kill the thing. And nobody said it was possible. And he realized, like, he killed it so easily. Like, it was just, it it was really anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. And then think, weird things start happening. So, basically, the idea of being on the other side of Leviathan is a myriad. So, it's the monster and the myriad. That's the first part of the story. The monster holds back this myriad of, of creatures that basically are the giant monster in embryo. Um and when there's one of them there, the alpha, basically, he eats all the little ones. Mm. Um, but as soon as he's gone, there's nothing to check the little ones. Right. So yeah. they go. So what the, the deal with the devil that the Empire made was that if we have Leviathan, then the myriad doesn't come out, which Leviathan only has attacks of five humans a day, whereas the myriad has attacks of 500,000 because each one of them will eat a, a person. So as soon as Leviathan's dead, then all the monsters come out. Um, 
so that was the idea and the whole the whole concept being that there is a third path between these that hasn't necessarily been figured out yet mm -hmm. and people are satisfied with the status quo one way or the other um but i what i'm trying to do here is actually something different uh and that is for me the innovation and i'm not saying this is the end result of what we're trying to do but we have to get there I don't think the starting point is a third path. I think the starting point is ta is a dialectic, mm -hmm. um, and that is taking the polarities and leveraging that energy. And that's why I'm using the metaphor of a motor or an engine, mm -hmm. um, or better yet, a dynamo, something that creates. Uh, uh, What's a dynamo? A dynamo is the the pro, the I guess the progenitor to a, what a generator or what we use now are alternators. So it's much more complex now, but in the beginning it was just a magnet and you had this thing spinning, you know, metal spinning in between the magnet. And so as the metal spins, it creates electric. It's the opposite of a motor. So, you know, if you hook up a motor to a, a nine volt matter battery, it's all, all you, all that is, is it's a magnet that the polarity it's, it's spinning the, the magnet in the middle, right? Okay. And so, but uh, a dynamo is the opposite of that. You spin the middle, and then um, that generates electricity. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So, uh, basically, you know, in all of the technology we have, all of this is we're able to do this is because we have someone came up with the concept of a dynamo, mm. uh, which led to a generator, which led to this the alternating current we get from alternators. I mean, it's kind of like uh, those things. Well, it's like a windmill, or, uh, or the water spins something that creates electricity. Right. So, in, in revol thinking of revolution, not as uh, a means to overturn power, but as a way to generate power. Generate power. That's the idea here. So, we're having a revolution between left and right, red pill, blue pill, north mm. south, positive, negative, and so that's why I like it because we we live in a binary world. We're in the binary age. And, you know, this is another metaphor that can be helpful. Zeros or ones. It's mm -hmm. because of switches, on-off switches. Literally everything we're doing is because of on-off switches. Boolean logic. That's how all of our computer programs are based in this if-then. Mm -hmm. Yes or no. Yes or no. Like, how do you get from digital to the this approximation of analog um, mm -hmm. through <laughs> lots and lots of yes-nos? Uh, yeah. Just stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of yes nos. Um, so when you think of it like that, as opposed to one giant yes no, I think that that's that's helpful. And so that's why I'm trying to yeah. to atomize this a, mm -hmm. a lot of this. And it's not that we're going to become experts in all of these things because no, no human no, no. can be all of them. And eventually, what we'll, the goal is to get to the point where we can delegate and, like you said, learn from one another. So I'm not going to be become a full-fledged kinesthesiologist, you know, but I can pick Jensen's brain about it and he can, you know, maybe I can give him some information about that, that I've learned from surfing or violin that he might not be as art, you know, articulate mm -hmm. with, whereas he can tell me a whole ton about the stuff he's learned from, uh, you know, stretching, cool down, uh, athletics at the competitive level that I have no idea about. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think, I think what I'm saying is that this discussion has given me, I think, more insight whenever I'm shut down by somebody who says, well, you just believe, you know, you're coming from a, a place of, of, um, you know, you, uh, you're, you're just coming from a binary place or something. You're mm -hmm. just, you just, you just have binary thinking. A lot of times when I go back and look at it, I was like, well, I don't want to be binary. But when I go back and look at what I said, like if it was in a discussion or something online, Mm. I find that like I was just trying to suss out the other side yeah. or explain my You're, side. Yeah. I'm not, no, I, I, you know, we have to have like we have to look at both sides. You know, just because I'm like when I state extremes, you know, like it's not I'm not always saying it's either or. Sometimes I'm just saying, well, okay, if this, what about that? You know? Right. And I think yeah, I know exactly. Oh my gosh, I've had that happen so many times. Where you're not even you're not even uh, espousing a party platform, but right. you get thrown into the. And this is again why we need like tiers of binaries, right? Mm -hmm. We need tiers. We need a, a very systematic, um, like program, computer program architecture of of these tiers of if thens, yes, no. It's like, oh, okay, you're pro life, huh? 
well, are you pro-life in this one specific case where this happened in the real world? And then the person's like, oh, when they hear that specific example, they're like, eee, well, mm-hmm. that's a hard one. Can we not start there? Yeah, no mm-hmm. one ever wants to start there, but mm-hmm. that's the point. Like, yeah. you, need, you need to go to the hard case and then yeah. progressively work easier. Right. So we need and- those binaries at, at Adam... At atomic level, instead of these grandiose grand narratives, and like in right. that specific, you know, uh, situation, you know, you got a person. You're not even saying like a, you're not like, they're just gonna they're gonna equate Aldous Huxley with freaking Rush Limbaugh. Like mm. that to me is just it's <laughs> yeah. just willfully naive. Yeah. Well, and and see what it makes me think of dialectical mm. polyology makes me think of. Polly Pocket. No, dialectical <laughs> <laughs> makes me think of dialogue. And when yes. you dialogue, we're not when we're we're dialoguing. Yes. We're not trying to build some third entity. Like we're not trying to together create uh, like some new um what, what, what like dimension or we're not trying to enter a new dimension together hmm. we're trying to understand each other yes. There's two people dialoguing yes. we're not trying to you know like oh, let's get away from what you and i believe and you know, go over here no we're 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 trying to understand each other and and i think that's important in communication when somebody says you're just coming from a place of a binary thinking i'm like well you're just shutting this dialogue down right yeah you're, you're, you're i mean just solipsistic it's not even yeah. they're not even willing to go to dialogue and they mean that it's so dumb where do we get dialogue from plato for crying out loud. socrates asking yes no questions you want to talk about binary that was the whole thing he's like well, what do you think about this and they're yes. like he asked questions and they were like well i think blah 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 he's like aha but have you considered blah 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 it's like we yeah. are 2500 years behind the times dummy ah, <laughs> why why are political debates so stupid 20 2000 500 years after Socrates for crying out loud. Jeez. Well, and it was my biggest argument when, when people, when people go, what is the thing when you, you bring up Hitler, you go to the, uh, something option. Oh, or yeah, it's, a, it's a law of the internet. I can't remember what they call it, but it's like yeah, rule 31. Or yeah, something. Like, yeah. bip, 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 Hitler. Yeah. So when people were, so when people equate Trump with Hitler and, and lately like equate, it, it, like camp his supporters in with Hitler lovers or, or, you know, uh, ultra right um, white supremacists. The problem is, is it becomes binary. It's like, well, screw you. Okay. I'm a, if that's, if that's what a, a white supremacist is, well, I guess that's what I am. You know, it's like binary. No, it's complicated, man. Well, you and, know? That, like, and that's why online it's just, like the next, the next generation of smart people are so savvy. They just they've just resorted to shit posting nonstop. Like mm. whatever side of these debates they are, like they're actually friends. Like you got a person that's on Chapo Trap House, uh, which is like a left you know left wing shit posting podcast. Like they're hanging out with people that are like not in the same universe of left wing shit posting. Uh, the Red Scare podcast. And they're hanging out. They're friends. Like mm. so. Like, you know, I mean, it's like Trump and Hillary, like that picture of them together back in the day. And they're genuinely smiling like this. Mm-hmm. So much of this is just kayfob. I mean, it's just yeah. and, and and for us at the at the base level who are not involved in politics to get carried along by this stupid rhetoric, it just they have to all be laughing about it. I mean, they're like Sharpie gate. Like Trump yeah. adding Alabama and I'm like, come on. Like he is totally trolling you, right? Like <laughs> he's getting you to he's getting you to compare him to Hitler because he he drew a Sharpie around Alabama. Like that is people are debating about that. Like um, I I can't even. Like I just whatever. Don't like, say that. I mean I can't just yeah. Just can't. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's 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 hard though because I'm these are people that I that I, I've had discussions with before. I've been in groups, you know, like accountability groups, and you know we've 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 listened to each other before, and all of a sudden it's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, you're a Trump supporter, you're you know, I don't know, it's just you're Hitler, you love right. Hitler, 
how can I even be friends with you? Uh, right. And, you know, I mean, you, you, you know, you get the same thing with the right, though. I mean, with yeah. certain segments of the right, depending on where you are, whatever version of the right that you happen to inhabit. But, you know, I mean, whether it's they're going to blame everything on the Jews, the Rothschilds or immigrants or whatever. Like there, there's yeah. there, it is this it is this uh, monochromatic, uh, you know, othering. What is the what is that? Uh, what do you call it? Zeno xenophobia xenophobia uh, yeah well but i think that the the difficulty as a conservative is is that we are in the minority as we feel i i feel like i'm in sort of the the oppressed uh sounds wrong to say but but when when the media triggered when the media is 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 completely on the other side it feels it feels like the oppressed side isn't the you know isn't the liberal side well and yeah i know but you just have to like at this at a certain point it's like Dave chappelle's new things called sticks and stones at a certain point it's just like it's just words what the hell are they gonna do they're not sending the cops over to our house you know it's just like they can sit there but and ban are. me from they are sending the cops well they're, they're not to me them. they haven't come to me i mean they're welcome to come to me <laughs> they think they think they can stop the france oh come on that would be the worst <laughs> thing possible for them to actually imprison like like Alex Jones or something like that. Like that would be yeah. the worst move. Like no, like even so, they get some people. I mean, what specifically you're talking about? Who who are they sending the cops over to? I mean, a lot well, of they, these shit posters on Twitter, or these right wing guys, have so, so gotten like, visited by the feds. But it's just like yeah. a scare tactic, and that and and for most of them, it's just a justifying measure. It's like, oh man, yeah, the feds true. visited me, dude. I talked to the FBI today. Like mm. yeah, like it's just. Well, uh, so I guess the problem for me is these are my friends. I don't care if they send the, they're not going to send the cops, but uh, they're not, they're, they're not engaging in, in relationship. You know, they're cutting me off and that, that's, uh, well, it's I, hard. I think that that has created a lot of, I mean, that's why I've, I've found camaraderie with a lot of other weirdos like me on Twitter, you know, like the perfume nationalist podcast, I find more in common, uh, with a gay dude who talks about perfume, like mm -hmm. I, ne I mean, I just never thought that would happen. You know, mm -hmm. like, uh, like we. Uh, so I mean, I just think that we're missing out on a lot of connections we probably otherwise would have because yeah. of these self-imposed ghettos. You know, it's like oh, I'm a conservative or I'm a Christian, and then we we miss out on like, wait a minute, you you know, you meet a Hindu or an atheist or something like that has a to like totally different worldview when it comes to religion or politics or linguistics blah 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 but then all of a sudden you both like a certain something that's mm -hmm. out of the realm for both of you and then you're like ah eureka you know and so that's that's what i find compelling about the internet yeah. is these these sorts of cross pollinations that people don't actually want us to have because they want i really i honestly i think most of this stuff is not political it's not sociological it's really just short-term greed, man. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just careerism. It's just like, ah, oh, we need these people to argue some more. Come on, we need more. Manufacture more dissent, please, please. Like yeah. we, we need things to stay like they are because I, I've, I invested in this one option here, and if anything changes, it's gonna change. Like it's not about whatever anyone says it's about ever, like ever. I'm, I'm convinced so much of it is, is stagecraft. I agree. A um, couple more. Fifth Ape says, let me check you out, Fifth Ape, if you're still here. Either way. Yeah, let's go to his, his uh, YouTube Ape productions. Why can't you just click on his icon? 34,000 subs. Well done. Well done. Impressive. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a lot of work. 2.8 million views. Well done. Uh, so he's expressing frustration. Back in the days, uh, say in 2014, my numbers were pretty high in millions. Mm. Um, I was making some stupid videos, and when every one I used to... King Etch, just subscribe. Thank you for the subscription, King Etch. Back again. <laughs> you just couldn't resist that Seth Rogen sexy hair, dude. <laughs> oh, it's Hush. Harsh Josie has just gifted five tier one subs to the surfing violence community. They've gifted a total of 40 to the channel. Thank you so much, Harsh. To gifted to King Etch, definitely not Solar Renekton. Frowned Nose, R242, and Dr. Harjot. 
Thank you so much. Hush. Nice. Um, so Fifth Ape was talking, I was making some stupid videos, and when everyone I used to make uh, something meaningful didn't get those views of millions. Yeah, and you know, that was about the same time, so you were in 2014, you were really trying to make it happen. Uh, that's when I was trying to make it happen. Mm. Uh, and something happened to YouTube in that time period uh, where it just, the bottom fell out and it began, it began rewarding at what we would call that positive feedback loop content, mm. uh, just paint by the numbers, superficial, uh, woke capital and, or just corporate controlled media. So mm -hmm. it's just, it was all makeup videos. It was all reaction videos. It was all comedy routines by people who've already made it. And, uh, yeah, so something happened around that same time period. I'll be shake. Just subscribed. I think is that on the YouTubes? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I think it'll be shake. Um, so, you know, a lot went wrong at that point. That was kind of the beginning of the end of YouTube as we knew it at that time. Uh, Adpocalypse and all that. Uh, and it forced a lot of people off the platform. Uh, so I wasn't the only one affected. I took it very personally. Uh, I think you probably took it very personally, but it wasn't just us. It, a lot of people got hit uh, from all walks of life. Uh, you know, I think dudes tend to complain sometimes. Like we do feel like on YouTube, ironically, you know, like the male is the, is the, like the, what do you, what do you call it? The privileged class in most fields mm -hmm. of the world. But on YouTube, that is patently untrue. Right. Um, especially since 2014. However, uh, women felt the uh, push too. You know that one terrorist attack. I mean that you know she uh, she was basically like your white rampage killer. Like she went there to shoot up YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. And uh, and you know like people made fun of her or they they just didn't get it. Like I she I really was... sympathized with her because she was trying to make it real. You know and and you can't talk to anybody at Google. They just don't care. And, you know, I mean, she you look at her as far as ethnically and everything is like she would meet the the template. But of what they're trying to do as a quote unquote woke capital corporation, but they still just they have a way that corporate that corporate culture, when you get into the tech world, has a way of just crushing people. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't fit everything to a like, uh, you're not hitting our market. You're a little weird. Like, all the things that made YouTube great before, you know, like, the, YouTube was weird, you know? Yeah. And it was kind of countercultural. It was odd. It was, it was like a curio <laughs> shop of, of weird videos. And now it's just this paint by the norm numbers. You know, it looks like a freaking, I mean, YouTube Rewind, the last two or three have looked like a, what do you call those, uh, like a Nordstrom catalog or something. Yeah. You know, it's just all pastel and Gap mm, smiley, happy people. <laughs> it's just, oh, it's abysmal. So that all that negativity being expressed, however, I think we're about to see a real renaissance. I think YouTube realizes, I honestly think Susan Wachiski is not a bad person. Um, I There's just a lot of moving parts in these things. Right, and there's a lot of people to try to appease. <laughs> it's just a lot of corporations involved. It's not just one, um, and there's just a lot of special interests involved, and you can't keep everyone happy. Mm. I think we're probably going to find a way through. That's so. I wouldn't give up yet. I mean, I'm looking at your views. You know, they've really sunk. But yeah, just don't give up. Just try to think. You know, like they say in the. Uh, in the the Silicon Valley biz, you know, pivot, pivot, pivot. Just like I don't know, go do a do some soul searching. This is taking me three years, man. And you know, I'm not getting any views now, but um, but well, I found people. But I found people that are their views that count. There are people I, that are actually say. their views that count. There are people that are actually benefiting from this, and it's what I want to talk about. Um, and I do want to get back to more. I I know I am in a play for. You know, I am in a place now where it is very esoteric and weird and intellectual and stuff like that. But I'm doing all this to figure out what I want to actually make that is pulp and mainstream. Like, I do want to do that. I do want to make a movie. I do want to make music videos. Um, I do want to do action stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to act again. I do want to write fiction again. Um, so I just want to be sure 
that because you, whatever your creative endeavor, you got to be sure that you are steel manned against what's coming. Yeah. Because what's coming, success can destroy you more than failure. And I've seen so many channels, you know, good people who just got destroyed by success. You know. So it's, uh, it's I, I, that seems weird, but sometimes the overnight success can be more soul destroying than you would think. And mm -hmm. people get crushed under that pressure. Just think of how many rock stars have committed suicide in the last 20 years. So you want to just be sure that you're steel manned and you're prepared for what's coming. Um, well, and it's not just, it, it's, they get crushed by success. It's like you really, we really have to work on defining what success really is. Is. success for us and that's the thing yeah. like you know I, I really like what you've been saying about sometimes like when you are maybe you're hitting your head against you know, something at work a person or a procedure that you're just like this is stupid and we're like but I have to do it and you're like no you don't have to do it you don't you just sit in the failure sit in the frustration and say is this worth it yeah you know like as, as much as the social pressure exists, wherever we are on this world, you know, I don't care if you're in Asia, you know, in Japan, and maybe there's just so much family social pressure and like, you don't understand, you don't understand. And you feel compelled to jump and go to that suicide forest or, you know, you're over here and you're, you, you're battling a drug addiction and no, and, and it seems like that pill or that drug is the only way out. Um, like you do have a choice and it's it's not an easy choice like to make no mistake about it it is a dilemma the level of captain america versus thanos like it mm -hmm. is, for you it is that big of a hero's journey climax and the third act decision but you can make a choice mm -hmm. you don't have to end it um or yeah. uh, you don't have to keep going you know, yeah, you can quit and walk away. You know, try something new. Um, it's like uh, JBP says. It's it's real hard. Oh, I can't do it. But it's real hard to. It's it's real hard to do. But of course, it's real hard not to too. You know? Yeah, exactly. So I'd say fifth day. Just don't give up. But maybe just take some breaks and experiment. You know, that's this whole channel right now for me is just a giant experiment. And mm -hmm. I think in 2020, I'm really not looking for the channel to be like a, the single source of income. Mm. Uh, but I am looking for it to be on the road to being uh, a significant source of income. And it, so it, that uh, to maybe develop. it is a road. It is a road. Yeah. To, it's not the whole thing. I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket, but it, it is I am trying to make it worth it. You know, worth it to the people who've invested in the channel over the years. Indian dude, Hush, um, you know, the people here. There's some people here I didn't even know. Someone gave us a $10,000, no strings attached gift to help us get to India. I still don't know who it is. They never said. So there have been people, there are people who b believe in you. Um, and you you want to make good. A lot of those people gave it as a gift. It wasn't like they weren't thinking of it as a necessarily a monetary investment. Uh, they, they just patr patronize you in a good way. Um, so yeah, you want to you want to pay it back to those people in one way or another, even if it's not the the monetary way. And so I I'm trying to get to the point where all that won't have been wasted. Um, so, but just slowly but surely, I think is a better. Uh, way and, and figure out what your own unique contribution is because we just you know we need more weirdness I think we need more directions um, it's not it's not necessarily the sexy overnight fix uh, Caleb said I went to a museum with Jensen and he saw some fossils arranged into a proto T-Rex and he immediately said with those knees and hips that would be the most boring dinosaur ever because he could tell by looking that it would hunt its prey like a battleship moving only like uh, like left and right and nothing like Jurassic Park fascinating that's interesting you could figure that out just by looking at the bone structure improbable one said when all gets too much all the frustration and rage what do you guys do to cool off when you guys get tired what do you do to chill out with mm -hmm. internet it seems like no one gets tired anymore um when it all gets too much all the frustration and rage this last couple of weeks i've been pretty bad at it to be honest like uh two weeks ago uh, you know i lost it 
on the phone. I got on my Ford rant with uh, with one of my buddies at work, and he was trying to uh, console me and give me some counsel. And I was like, "Get out of my face, a hole." Um, so I don't. I think that's one of the reasons why I haven't really tried to fully invest in growing the channel. It's it's really more of a uh, us trying to help each other out, figure out how to get through this this time, talk some of this out, and have some kindred spirits who uh, understand the the struggle of trying to create art. Uh, yeah, if we don't seem tired when we're doing these podcasts, it's because this is what we're doing <laughs> to, to get yeah. away from that. Uh, no, for real. Like uh, another Gyro, I think, asked me, like, what is your writing process? And like this morning was not a very productive one, obviously, you saw what I wrote, but... Um, my uh i mean you know it's good conversation hopefully uh but like last week's i wrote that in like less than 40 minutes like that one just like, ah! it's like ah! and it's just for me that's therapy that's that's therapeutic as mm-hmm. uh, channeling this rage into this podcast <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> my rage at society and frustration and uh and i'm not saying honestly though i think the best way to channel it the way that i felt the best about my in my past when i was in a better place was channeling it into art that's the best way music art film Film is the film is the hardest one to execute on and so that's why for you improbable one please don't give up on those film dreams uh if some of the stuff doesn't work because uh you you're gonna get there but you might have to do some almost treat some other projects like storyboards for those those ideas you have sem- cinematically mm. and uh, because that's that's kind of what I'm doing at this point like I'm I'm t- tinkering around with a little video game uh mm. of of like one this one idea I've had for a while rather than actually shooting it I'm just making it like a little playable RPG RPG maker XP it's a little, it takes a little while to learn but it's not as bad as Photoshop I think um and so I it that's been kind of a good way for me to blow off steam Try to find a try to find a low tech, low maintenance way of telling your story. Uh, I see a lot of people doing it on Twitter right now. Honestly, uh, yeah, I was gonna say I like to go on Facebook and yesterday, did you see that post I put about? Uh, this, I just reposted somebody's little meme about the snail. Would you take yeah the snail? Like and a like, little thought got, experiment. Yeah, I got so lost in that <laughs> meme. <laughs> Maybe that should be made into a playable playable video game. It really should. Well, I got to go. I okay. got another podcast I got to go to. We're not doing reverse redaction today, right? We're going to wait. Not today. Yeah. I'll, I'll stay here a couple more minutes, uh, answer a little more chat. So uh, thanks for thanks for being here, Judah. We will be doing a reverse redaction, God willing, sometime on uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. So. Coming up. Coming up. Otherwise, uh, yeah. So stay tuned. Next, next week, though, we're good for another episode yep. oh yeah all right all right oh where, hey what podcast are you going in uh, case anyone wants uh, to check it out yeah uh if you go to rotohackers.com or youtube slash rotohackers uh we're talking about fantasy if you like fantasy football come check out me and jared and aj herschel the kid talk about fantasy football news and entertainment all right sounds good thanks man all right brother see ya Okay, sorry, hold on. Okay, let me change this, hold on. Still not used to Streamlabs new format. Hmm. Sorry guys, hold on a second. Um, I need my Jamie here. It's really not letting me see the uh, doohickey. Studio mode, is that it? No. I'm trying to like... Uh, Hold on, sorry guys. Man, why is this like befuddling me? Here we go. Okay, I'll get to a little bit more of the chat. Okay, sorry if there's anybody left. Improbable One uh, had gone on asking, uh, when you guys get tired, 
Is it still? Okay, jeez. Oh man, I'm, I'm driving myself crazy here. Okay. Okay, sorry. No Jamie. That means I'm Jamie and I, uh, I'm getting confused by Streamlabs interface here. Uh, when you guys get tired, what do you do to chill? Chill. So, I've been watching uh, Silicon Valley. I love that show. I think it gets out a lot of the frustrations I have with corporate culture, with um, the YouTube problems I was talking about, with Fifth Ape. Um, it's, it's kind of cathartic for me. Uh, so I know that you've enjoyed Bill Burr. So, I mean, I think comedy can be helpful sometimes. Um, I think in general, though, the best antidote is not consumption. It's probably doing something, which, like last night, it was work on the floor installing at, our, at this new place we're trying to move into, and it's just not working. I just kept malfunctioning, and I was just getting more and more frustrated. But you've got to get through those times, and trying something is better than trying nothing I think so that that whole trying to get from the like 10 to 1 input output uh, consumption to creation like to get that more one to one uh, so I think the things that have really been helping me is getting a little bit more off social media like you had talked about uh, spending more time reading books that make me think about uh, more practical things that maybe I can do something about. So uh, economics books is what I've been reading. So I've been reading Principles of Economics by Minger. So it's a topic that's of, of interest to me. Uh, back when I was first studying film, I, I did read a lot of books about film. Some of my favorite film books were uh, Good Scripts, Bad Scripts. I think his name was Thomas Pope, the guy that did it. Sidney Lumet had a book. I want to say it was called Making Movies Work. It was a really good one. Um, a book I've been interested in reading is called Blockbusting by by uh, Lucas, of all people. And it's basically looking at film as a business, which I think is important for us artists to think about. We, we tend to not think about that. We tend to think about just the uh, artistic expression side. And that can, you know, you, you, you got to live. And we live in a system in which money is important. And money was not just important uh, once movies were on the scene. So... Yeah, it's it's important part to to look into that I I didn't really look into. Uh, five C's of cinematography is a good one for composition. Old school. A lot of the rules don't really necessarily apply anymore, but it's good to know the roots. Um, I think reading is is a is a good is a good thing to do for sure. It's been helpful for me. Uh, me personally, I am a Christian, so. I've been getting back into, I, I used to, be, like, I'm a Christian nerd, okay? Like, I read, like, the, the 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 dictionaries and stuff like that, commentaries and things like that. Um, so whatever religious background you have or philosophical background, going back into the nitty-gritty of that kind of stuff, like, even for me, reading uh, Nietzsche as an outsider, uh, not as an atheist, but... I was just blown away by some of what he's saying. So whatever the thing is that in, has invigorated you in the past, or maybe it's your cultural or religious or uh, national heritage, going back and, and getting a fresh look at that, digging deeper, I think that that's good. I've always been, uh, I, interestingly enough, the more I study in, in Christian stuff in my background, the more I've been critical of of the popular expression expression of christianity so it has had the inverse effect of i think what people might think like oh you're going to be more indoctrinated it's like no actually not uh so that's been very good for me this week it's given it's so basically the one that the, it's a 10 volume thing written by this dude kittle and it's the analysis of ancient greek which is kind of it's it's he doesn't just talk about it how it was used in the bible in the new testament which was written in greek uh, but it also talks about what Plato, Aristotle, and them were saying. Herodotus, all these guys that wrote in that Koine Greek. So you get a, a pretty good understanding. It even came in handy today with the, with the talk about the ologies. So uh, that's been useful for me. The bugs thing has been useful for me. I was a, just a big into bugs as a kid. So the biology part of that polyology 
has been useful for me. Uh, this iNaturalist app, I love it. I've put up 50, I think, species now. And I just, I notice them, I, I notice more often. And it helps me kind of snap out when I'm in like a funk or, you know, and I call it the Eeyore zone. Like yesterday I was walking past a, uh, we're at the uh, gas station and I saw a dragonfly. So I snap a picture of it and I still don't know what species it is, but I don't know. It's, it kind of helps me get my head out my ass. Uh, those things help. And, uh, again, finding something as far as creative expression goes, that's not a high investment, low risk potential reward, you know? So garage band for iPad has been one of my saving graces over the last 10 years. And I'm really thankful for that app, $5 app, you know? Um, so, and there are, there are tons of really great apps out there where you can, honestly, man, I would look into now, uh, is it Unreal Engine and Blender? Blender just came out with this insane update that, I mean, they are making short films in Blender that look like just a million bucks. It's extremely difficult uh, program to, to learn, very steep learning curve, but it's free. And YouTube has so many tutorials now. There's one that I like, Lazy Blender Tutorials. He just does in a minute, shows you this amazing thing. It's actually, I'm not going to actually do the thing. Uh, but watching him do it, it's been, I was like, man, this is so cool. This thing is, this is done for free. So I, I think that there's a lot of opportunities for storytelling using the internet, using video games, and uh, using CG. And even just using Twitter, I've seen people make a career, side career, out of Twitter just by being creative with it. So start small and uh, yeah, try to relax. I know it's just this, the dread hits hard. Um, so frowned nose asked what's just uh, happened. Uh, yeah. Hush gave you a, gave you a sub there. Um, I did hear about India's moon mission just a little bit, but I'm really not keeping up too much with the, with the whole uh, news cycle of India or here. Uh, stuff will pop up in my Facebook algorithm. Like, you know, we, we mentioned Trump there for a minute. That's just like, uh, I just, I just want to scroll past it all. I just, I'm just annoyed. Um, but it fell too short, two kilometers from the surface of the moon. Oh man. No, I didn't hear about that part. I didn't know about that. Um, uh, Shivam said, now real-time subscriber won't be seen by the audience. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't even see that update with YouTube. Um, Harsh said, I have to make a move forward. I wanted to say that even though I have not been able to watch the live streams in the recent past, but I've been keeping up with the podcast, keep up the good work. Thanks, Harsh. Thanks for continuing support. Thanks for sticking with us and listening. You'll get views in a few years. You can do better than Pity D if I did news commentary. I'm just not interested in telling the news commentary. Fifth Ape, you know what I think? You were early to the party and you left early because right now there are uh, now big numbers of foreigners, YouTubers in India dominating. Yeah, I, I've seen some of them um, a little bit here and there. But uh, but yeah, like you, I just think it was not it was not the thing I necessarily wanted to do, right? And so it's like those were getting views, but... I don't think I would have been happy making the money doing it that way. So I would rather just not I like if, if push comes to shove, I'm going to make what I want over, over making what's going to make money as far as YouTube's concerned. Um, and I'm, I'm paying my dues elsewhere. So I like, it's, it's worth the trade off for me to, to work the manual labor job at this point. That's better for my brain. Uh, reacting to India content is a new niche in YouTube space. Yeah, I mean, they started doing that, I guess. It was really at the beginning the end for my channel. Ironically, YouTube India, this popped up. Somebody liked this tweet this week. Uh, it was 2014 YouTube India. The official YouTube India Twitter account said, uh, remembering Ford like the car, like they tweeted my channel. I like, what? I totally even forgot that happened. Um, let's see, what did it say? that disappear it must have been like a must have been like a bot account or something like that 
Yeah, it's not showing up. I feel like a bot account must have retweeted it, but somebody retweeted. Which one was it? Someone retweeted this tweet from YouTube India saying something about my channel. I was like, man, I totally forgot that even happened. <clears throat> the new algorithm has screwed the YouTube. Yeah, to be honest, we're at this point where it's not an algorithm. It's, it's, uh, it's manufactured, man. They're not even using technology to do it anymore. They're, they're manipulating the, manipulating the thing through, um, choosing, picking favorites and stuff. Uh, so Jared, going back to what me and Judith said about being crushed by fame, I would say it's a little more on the side of being crushed by fame than success, true. Going back to what you were saying about people finding a god and someone, human brains just aren't equipped to handle that kind of adulation. Yeah, that's true. That's a, and that was a good point. Um, when we often don't think of, and I mentioned this actually in this uh, this my book that I've been trying to write, The Building a Better Me, I'm talking about how humans don't do good under that kind of, of, uh, of being on that kind of pedestal that it does something weird. And then in, in a way they almost become like a sacrifice, like a scapegoat for society's ills one way or another, because humans just, yeah, the way he put it there, that's, that's, that's it. Aren't equipped to handle that kind of adulation being put on that kind of pedestal. The weight is too crushing. And so I think we need much more, more measured way of going about, uh, human work and success and the value of our contributions artistically and, uh, uh, economically. One more thing from fifth A. I saw once in Mumbai, I saw you once in Mumbai in Versova when you came to shoot the viral fever video. No way. Huh? Did we, did we like officially meet, shake hands? Wild. It's kind of a whirlwind week. Huh. Man, I don't remember. I'm sorry. But yeah, I would say just don't, don't give up though. I was, uh, I was reminiscing about viral fever last week. Uh, it was good times, uh, but even even they, you know, have kind of moved on. A lot of the people who made it what it was are not there anymore. Um, yeah, just don't don't give up. If you if you do take a break from YouTube, just don't give up on the creativity though. Now YouTube is a grind. PewDiePie posts a video daily. Um. Improbable and says had to get had yet another setback. Got to work on a big budget feature film as an assistant to the director. It was insane and unreal. But just after the fourth day of the shoot, had an episode after four years. Oh, so now I'm back on the little house arrest type situation by the doctors. It's way better to start on the smallest level. Now that I've learned that doing the hard work on the field is not for me. It's extremely stressful. I don't think people appreciate how actually hard the job of making movies under the current system is. It's they they want they want the world for no investment, basically. Matthew Knowles. Oh man, thanks for tuning in, dude. I think probably by the time you've seen this, I'm <laughs> you've already moved on. Uh, but what a great voice you have, good sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Uh, I wish we could hang out again. I wish we could act together. That would be the jam. Yeah, we'd do some. We could do some uh, acrobatic action scene together. That would be cool. Matthew Knowles is a legend, uh, an actor. He's actually been in some movies in China. Uh, it's just uh, I haven't seen him in years. Improbable one. Yeah, that whole bug thing is fascinating. I've begun to do bird watching in that manner. See, that's good. That's good. I think uh, someone else mentioned this in a podcast I was listening to, how bird watching has been helpful for them. They're actually pretty good at uh, uh, checking out the different species. And, and, you know, so find your thing, you know. Sebastian just came in chat. Like, he's got 
uh, fascination with uh, drums, and uh, that's the thing that I think gives him life. He's looking back into getting into that. Uh, me and him both about to get back in the league together. I'm coming back, Sebastian. I think I'm coming back. It's just a month left, a month and three days. And probably one says, yeah, the new Blender update is insane. During my rest period at home, I'll be giving Blender a serious attempt. Yeah, don't be overwhelmed, okay? Like that, that to me, I just can't. It's so confusing to me. I found After Effects to be difficult at the beginning, but Blender is like on another level entirely. I don't know if you ever saw my hotkeys video, but that's actually a parody of Blender. So here, I'll share that one in the chat. I still, uh, what did, who did we put that under? It's me, Lou Columbus. Uh, I think I did re-upload it to my channel. Uh, direct to nowhere is what we called our little waiting you <laughs> waiting on you as we speak. You know, leak bro, leak, leak bro. Yep, check the yeah, check this one out, Sebastian. Maybe you you've probably seen this one. Da 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 um, this was one of my favorite sketches. What we called our little hey, waiting you. Um, this is one of my favorite sketches we did. So yeah, check that out. Hotkeys. That's all. That's all. Making fun of how dumb I felt when I would try to use Blender. All right. Well, I think that's it for today. Godspeed, lords and ladies. Thank you for. Tuning in. Thanks to Hearts Joshi for supporting the show. Uh, Godspeed to everyone out there. And uh, yeah, we're going to get to some more creative stuff as time goes on. Let's just keep uh, encouraging each, one, each other to hang in there. Find some other fields of interest that may be out of your wheelhouse um, that, that do interest you, but you maybe don't have the time for. And find some people to pick their brains about. And that way you can tie in a social component to it, right? Uh, I think that's one of the things the internet is actually really good for is connecting people with different interests and you can learn from their expertise. Um, like I've really benefited from the perfume nationalist podcast and his expertise on perfume. Like he introduced me, reintroduced me to this art form that I, you know, as a dude, I just didn't think about. I hadn't thought about it in 20 years. Uh, well, yeah, almost. And, um, so, you know, I threw him a Venmo this week, like as a tip for, you know, it's like people tip me when I play violin at Los Santos local, locally here with my buddy Anthony Peebles. They tip us when they like what we do. And it's just a, it's a free will gesture, right? Like no one's forced them to give a tip, but they heard they were in the mood to hear Hotel, I mean, not Hotel California, uh, my mind's a blank, you know, whether, whatever it is, like Devin went down to Georgia, um, House of the Rising Sun, and it just hits them right, and they give twenty bucks. You know, it's like we didn't ask them for it, but they they felt like inspired by it, and so that's the same thing that happened with me with the Perfume Nationals. Like, um, I want to tip him because I like he gave me something. He he drew my attention to something I didn't even know existed. Um, that there's this whole art form in smell, you know, and that's it's. Uh, it's been an eye-opening experience for me. Um, so try to find like these these mutual interests or things that maybe you're not even interested in that that can uh, that can open up a whole new world to you. And so that's kind of the whole point of this dialectical polyology innovation generator. I can be a way to connect with people too, uh, and I think the I think the internet could be a useful useful thing there. All right, Godspeed, everyone. I'll see you soon, Sebastian. Very soon. League, bro. Godspeed. We'll see you on the other side.